GNT show is intended for mature audiences. Parental discretion is advice. Live long and prosper, bitches. friends with benefits <laughs> speaking of having a good time terry mm-hmm. dayton broke <laughs> the gnt show this is now the david mac <laughs> appreciation <laughs> hour <Twitter>. you asshole <laughs> <laughs> what is it about this guy that people love him so much with his purple velvet cape and his crown i thought it was a little much when he had us carry him in the studio on a throne i am awesome <laughs> Look what I have done! Look what I have brought upon the world! There is an urge to go nyan 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 nyan. I heard rumors that you might be working on something else, but we won't pry much. <laughs> I'm gonna say it. I'm gonna pry a little. <laughs> dare you! How dare you ask me to change it? Do you not understand the majesty of my genius? <laughs> and the guy sitting next to me looked at me like he was, you know, like I'd cramped in his hat. Yeah, it's the professionalism yeah. that sells the show, that's right.
it's okay if we trust an unknown race You can read any one of our thoughts So be careful what you wish for in this land of dreams come true Cause you just might get what you want Welcome back, everybody, the GNT Show Supplemental Log. I'm Terry Lynn, and joining me, of course, is, as always, is our wonderful Klingon in residence, Ceridium. Kapla! <laughs> and this week, we are very happy to bring you a great recording of a conversation that we are having with a great band who you can hear on the GNT Show because they were so kind to let us use their music, Five Year Mission. Hello. Welcome, gentlemen. Thank Hi. you. And, and I'm just going to kick it off. A lot of people may not know, uh, some of our listeners may not know uh, much about your music. I, however, was very excited and, and just very thrilled that you guys allowed us to use the music on our show because it adds a nice little edge. And at the same time, we still get to say it's kind of Star Trek related, which is what our podcast is kind of all about. But also because you're the first band that we've had a chance to really talk to and delve into the alternative storytelling and talk about the alternative Star Trek storytelling. You guys are retelling Star Trek tales in music. Tell us a little bit about how Five Year Mission came about. Okay, um, they're all pointing at me, so I will talk. <laughs> um, this is Mike, and I pretty much started the band. Um, uh, I, I had an idea to write a song for each episode of Star Trek, and I was going to take that on all by myself, but then I decided that I didn't want to do it all by myself, and now there's five of us. Now, do you guys all live nearby each other? Is this... <laughs> Yeah, we, we all live in the same city, and... We've actually never met face-to-face. <laughs> <laughs> all right. this, this entire band is done over Skype. <laughs> well, hey, you know what? I, I, I Leaving it to Trekkies, that could happen. I wouldn't put it past people. So we all played in um, bands locally here and kind of knew each other from the music scene, um, but we had never all played in a band together. Well, we, we played. We, we sat in on various bands. We played together, just not in... Our, our bands all, would all play together. together. Yeah, right. Yeah. Our bands would play together or... Play uh, say I would sit in on in Mike's band for an acoustic show or Noah's band for an acoustic show or something like that. But we never really actually all played together for the same band until now. Yeah. Until now, and and out of curiosity, is there any one of you that would actually cop out to saying that you're not as big a Trekkie as everybody else? I think Andy. I don't know. I, I don't know. know. Yeah, Andy more so now. I think. <laughs> oh yeah, right. He's not here. Yeah, he's not here. <laughs> Andy's, not here. Yeah, Andy's definitely the worst. Picture. <laughs> he doesn't even think he likes Star Trek. Yeah. <laughs> he doesn't even know what a red shirt means. <laughs> so he, he does wear the red shirt. Is that it? Yep. Yeah. yeah. That, that's great. That's and great. He wears his, um, his, he wears his stripes, stripes proudly. proudly. Yeah. He knows what it means to be engineering <clears throat> and not just a random red shirt. Lieutenant Commander. That's right. Scotty Scotty was in that, that uh, captain's chair more than Kirk was. Don't forget it. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> that's right. 
causing trouble and breaking the prime directive. Uh, and they live near a fire department. This is awesome. <laughs> yeah, I'm in the middle of nowhere, so I don't I'm, don't have to worry too much about the siren. And if I do if I do hear a siren, then I really have to worry. Um, <laughs> exactly. Uh, so now you guys have three albums plus an EP out now, correct? Yes. And tell everybody a little bit about what each album contains and what the songs in- encompass. Well, we're writing all of the songs, kind of putting them out in broadcast order, uh, with the exception of The Cage, which we started things off with. Um, and so the first album runs from the episode of The Cage, um, then picks up TOS and runs through Shorely. And then that's the first 16 tracks. And then the second album, Year 2, runs from the Galileo 7 to Who Mourns for? Adonius, and then year three runs from the changeling through Ooh. immunity syndrome. And then, then we have the Trouble with Tribbles EP, which has all of us writing songs about that particular episode. <laughs> so the EP is all about the one episode. Yes. And where can people go and get your music? From your website and from where else? Anybody? Yeah, uh, you can get it from our website, which is fiveyearmission.net, and then you can also get it from iTunes, um, Amazon, or on Spotify, uh, Last FM. Pretty um, much anywhere yeah, you look. Yeah, there's all, if you go to our website, there's there are our, our social media links are up at the top and several of those are you know aside from the Facebook and Twitter there's also our the, the places where you can get our music uh, excellent and of or course you, you can get them at shows and if you get them at shows you know we don't charge people for autographs or anything like that a lot of people like to get, get stuff signed and you know we happily do that so it's it's always advantageous to come see us at a show because not only do you get, you get to see us live but you also get to come up and talk to us and you know buy stuff from our grubby <laughs> pods and have us sign up <laughs> give us all your money yeah give us your money <laughs> When we do play a show, it costs us a lot of money, so you know, yeah. work it over. <laughs> <laughs> now, Mike, did you have a question? Um, well, since we're talking about the the triple uh, triple EP, um, I noticed that on year three you have a song, "The Trouble with Tribbles." How did you guys decide which which version from the EP to go with? Um, I'm glad you asked. A random choice. Yeah, we. <laughs> <laughs> you just flipped the smallest member of your, of, your, of the band. We just well, <laughs> what we did five times. We, when we decided to do the uh, the the, the um, trouble with trouble DP, uh, we decided that we were all going to write a song for it, and and then um, we'd have the fans vote to see which which one got on on year three. And actually, I this is Chris. I was the one that actually drew uh, because for every uh, album we just draw the episodes out of a hat or um, or some, yeah, sometimes you know, figuratively speaking and sometimes literally. Um, <laughs> so, <laughs> an urn, wasn't yeah, one time was an urn for year two. I think. Oh, and, I love it. That's awesome. <laughs> so year one was kind of just a random free for all, and then we started drawing for year two. But then, um, so I actually drew the Trouble of Tribbles for year three, and since we already did the EP and we decided, you know, we're gonna have people vote on it, I was concerned because if mine didn't win, then I was gonna have it, I was gonna have one less song on the album than anybody else. And so it was fortunate that mine actually got the most votes, and that's why that's why that one is on the album. Aha! Uh-huh. Now for for the um, here's a little a little future insight. Our next album is going to be a Spock's Brain EP. And we're doing <laughs> this one a little differently. Actually, all five of us are writing a song for the Spock's Brain, Spock's Brain EP, and Mike drew the episode for year four, so he's going to write an extra song. And I've already written an extra song for it, so there's going to be... Seven, to date, there will be seven songs. <laughs> <laughs> See, this, you know, there may be more <laughs> since you have two on the EP I might go ahead and write two for the EP and then a third one for the album yeah, we, we should just all write two or three of them we would all write two <laughs> <laughs> because you'd have one on the on the album so we'd all write two songs and you'd have eight oh ten 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 Spock's brain you think you could handle ten songs about Spock's brain <laughs> <laughs> I, I, to be honest with you I, I think I could I really do I think I could <laughs> brain what is brain brain what is brain as long as one of those songs is, it's not as bad as people make it out to be. <laughs> there are worse episodes. There are. There are yeah. definitely worse episodes than Spock Brain. I, I, it was, after, it was just kind of infamous, you know. Well, after having watched the episode, you know, several times writing the songs, I, I really have a greater appreciation for it. It's really, it, it has some goofy stuff in it, um, but overall, it's a pretty cool episode, I think. It's not a bad episode. It just seems like they took a lot of elements from other episodes that they'd already done and kind of put them it's, together. It's really been not 
nonsense of putting Spock's brain back in. Right. Then, yeah. <laughs> like, really throws, you know, that's where it jumps the shark. But but they use they use that big hair dryer that makes them smart. <laughs> I know the, the teacher. <laughs> yeah, but then he throws it out, and, and but, you still can but, do it. But Spock's already smart, and he tells him how to do it. Spoiler alert! Spoiler alert! <laughs> Spoiler alert, yeah. uh (laughs) That's awesome. Uh, Oh my God, you guys cracked me up. Now, I think this brings up a good opportunity for us to talk about, um, you know, what our show is about. When when people talk about G&T, it's like, why why does G&T exist? And that is, we like to celebrate all forms of Star Trek storytelling. And you guys have some great stories about how you uh, not just came together as a band and, and how you became Trekkies if you did or if, if the band forced you to become one. I mean, it, it was, <laughs> did, they, did they force the Kool-Aid down your throat? Um, but also, it's my understanding. Now, Andy is the only one who's not here today, correct? Yes. Right. Okay. So the rest of you are all songwriters as well. All of you take a, a, a responsibility for writing your song. Here's a question for each one of you, and if you, if you don't mind answering um, on an individual basis, how do your styles of, of songwriting differ from your band? Bandmate. I think over it's been might a learning have, process. Might better. I, I like to talk <laughs> when everyone else is talking. <laughs> um, it's been a process. kind of figured out what everyone is really good at, and I think we're to the point now where we're kind of each kind of pushing even further to do something different from what everybody expects. <laughs> like, uh, okay. Yeah, we, yeah, we all kind of have our distinct sounds. Um, yeah. I, I don't know if I, I could descri- you know just sit here and describe each person's sound to you, but um, I mean when you listen to our song. And, and you know whose whose song it is. You can kind of think, oh yeah, yeah, this you know this sounds familiar. So I think, um, I mean, speaking for myself, for um, you know, in year three, I tried to try to branch out a little bit and do a little bit some some things that were a little bit different, and that continues on Spock's brain. Um, I I don't want to sound like the other guys, but I want to evolve myself, if that makes sense. And I think I, I think that's kind of um, you know I'm kind of speaking for everybody here, but I think that's kind of universal in the band where you know we, we try to have our own sound <clears throat> our own special sound for everything we do but we want to create new sound that's still us we have a group sound that just incorporates a lot of different influences yeah. and we sort of cast the net really wide when we started just we could write a song in whatever style we wanted or about anything having to do with the episode and it just seems to have worked that way and we seem to we're all different we have different voices but we kind of complement each other pretty well. well a lot of the stuff we do is it, except for maybe Andy it, it evolves <laughs> a lot when we when we are our demos, a lot of our demos are distinctly, have a distinctly different sound than what you hear on, on the album, because we've, we've brought it into the to the practice room, and you know, us being, um, you know, singer, songwriter, guitar players, um, you know, we don't, some of us kind of have a, a, a drum beat in mind, but I, I don't, because I just don't have that in my head, usually. And so I come in, and you know, Andy lays down a drum beat, and I'll say, oh yeah, that's perfect, or no, that doesn't sound quite right, and it just kind of, you know, moves from there, and, and and until it find we find that place that it perfectly matches. I know. We're going to you know going back to the uh, songwriting part of that. One thing that this band has allowed me to do is, is you know when I hear a song written by someone else that I love or a band my favorite band that I'm listening to and, and I just go man I would love to write a song like that song you know or similar to that song um, in that same vein like I get to for this band whereas in previous bands I might go I can't do some sort of keyboard heavy 80s sounding song because that's not what this my band sounds like but mm-hmm. with this band I'm lucky to be surrounded by lots of talented musicians who can like make what I have in my head happen and, and that's really well, cool not something I've had the experience of doing in the past. See, and that's fantastic. That's the one thing that I think that, that you as a band have that a lot of other bands don't have, and that's that freedom to be able to swap genre at, at any given time. You're not, you're not held to having to, you're not held to be uh, any particular sound, any particular genre. If you really wanted to go off and do something, it's just you doing your music, but it sounds different. I mean, I think that's a phenomenal freedom that you have that most other don't. Yeah, and I think we're all comfortable enough with each other that if we really brought something to the table where everyone else is like, I just can't do that. <laughs> no matter what your vision is for that, I think we would all, you know, we're comfortable enough that we can get it. Oh, all right. Yeah. So I, I don't think that we've really come, come across yet, that. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Usually we, we try as hard Wait as we can. Wait till year to, four, guys. Yeah. Well. 
think I'm the only one that has had any real opposition to any songs, but I eventually came around on <laughs> what, what what did you have opposition? Well, there, were, there were two there were two versions of Obsession. Uh, oh right, right. The, the first version I really liked, but then once we developed the the second version, and that's the one you hear on the album. I really liked that one too, and so I was happy we did that one. Then the other one was uh, Wolf in the Fold, where. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, wanted to, I wanted to develop it further, and everybody else really liked it the way it was, and so I, I kind of got voted out on that. Well, the, and to, or, be, outvoted, to be fair, the version that you hear on the album was supposed to be a joke, and uh, I was going to write another actual full-length yep. real song. And the more I listened to to the one that it ended up being, the more I liked it. So we went ahead and did it. <laughs> My brain just had to, it, it had process, you know, for a while to get past the joke part. Whereas for me, the first time I heard it, I was like, that's it, Mike. That's the one. <laughs> <laughs> so you don't have to write another version. That's it, that one. Just like that. I loved it. And it wasn't, you know, wasn't really a standout episode necessarily. I mean, it was a good episode to toy around with and do something well, sort of lighter with, maybe. You know, as far as the song goes, I will give it one thing. It is definitely different than anything else we have. <laughs> Which um, is kind of, like we said, it's kind of the beauty of, of this band is we can we can do stuff like that. No, yeah. Going back to your question um, about uh, our songwriting and everything, um, I think also the fact that we switch around our instruments on, on different songs, it, it kind of helps us to stay fresh and not be stuck in like the same thing all the time, and, and it helps us to keep the songs different. So like we might have a, two songs that are in a very similar style, but we're all on different instruments, so they end up sounding very different. And that's something that I really, that's something I really want our listeners to understand is that, with the exception of Andy who plays drums, so Noah, Patrick, Mike. And, and Chris, all four of you swap lead vocals, guitar, bass, guitar, and keyboards, correct? Anything right. else? You, is there a mandolin thrown in there for good measure? I, I play a lot of ukulele. Yeah, Patrick, okay, please. that counts. The ukulele yeah, counts. Hard. I play a spiel every once in a while. We have, <laughs> yeah, for us. we have accordion on a song that I play. I think on, on year, four, or, uh, year four, we'll have uh, some harmonica. That's right. I, I played um, the trumpet on Patrick's triple song. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. We, we had a couple of guest musicians come in to play... Um, um, trumpet and uh, what was it? Violin, Cello? Or vi- and violin. Violin. Yeah. yeah. So we. That's another thing. We really being having been in the music scene here in Indianapolis for quite some time. We know a lot of other musicians, and so for us, it's a lot of fun to. to if, if we're not going to be able to make something sound as good as we want it to, we can go out and find somebody that we know that will, and you know, that just you know, say, hey, you want to be on the album? And, and right. for the most part, people seem you know they're pretty excited. Like, yeah, sure, that that's awesome. But there's actually at least two members of Five Year Mission on every recording yeah <laughs> <laughs> there, is a, there is a minimum requirement is that what you're saying? And, and most often is not known <laughs> <laughs> oh, you know what? And we should point out. Um, I know we kind of we briefly mentioned it, but Andy for uh, the Trouble with Tribbles, Andy uh, wrote his own song, and he had a friend of his help help him uh, arrange it. But I mean, that was as far as you know the writing goes, writing the, the music or the the, uh, the music and the words. That that was all him. It'll be the same way on Spock's brain, the Spock's brain. And that was kind of fun um, when we did it live because Mike got to get behind the drum kit and play drums for Andy's song while Andy got to get up. And <laughs> Mike's the only guy in the band who can play. Russell's, I mean, barely. <laughs> <laughs> hey, yeah, we, you can't see it, but we are using quote fingers. <laughs> hey, I, I can play the drums. I just can't play the drums. <laughs> you can play the drums. He's just not drama. There you go. I'm not okay. a professionalist. <laughs> He's a not a professionalist. I got it. I got it. Um, now, what um, what would you say is your band's probably biggest inspirations? What what other bands? What other musicians do you guys really like to? Peter uh, Francis. <laughs> hey, I like him. R- really, pretty much everything ever. I, I, I think that we're really influenced by all different kinds of music. We are. I think if you if you uh, I think '90s sort of guitar rock and power pop is sort of maybe the main focus, and, and, and then we just yeah, split 60s, off from that. And '60s a little bit. '60s yeah. and, and the and '70s and the '80s and the '80s. <laughs> and pretty much everything <laughs> until new metal, and then we're done. <laughs> <laughs> I was going to ask you on a personal note: uh, Is there any kind of music that individually you guys just as a as a person you can't stand to listen to that if you it comes on the tele on the radio or whatever and will you turn the channel to listen because you just can't stand it saxophone <laughs> <laughs> no sax solos for you and i've been trying to work a saxophone into the song <laughs> just to annoy him <laughs> if so, i had no idea I'm playing it <laughs> 
That's the only way that that's going to work. <laughs> I didn't know that. So I would like to have a sax on my yeah. song. Yeah, I don't know. And nobody else? I, 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 I'll, I'll be the dissenter here, and I will say only that. It's, it's not that there's... Yeah, there is plenty of music out there that I will not listen to. <laughs> there's plenty of terrible, terrible music out there. But that, that list gets too big. I mean, we, we could just start right. naming bands. But, but, but you know what? Wants that. If it was a style of song that you didn't like, but it was about Star Trek, maybe you would like it. That's true. <laughs> well, yep. I, I really detest pop country. And oh, right, yeah. I, I really like alt country. Right. And there's, there's, there's a not-so-fine line between those. Um, so, like, if, you know, you might hear some... We have a, a couple songs that I've written that are definitely country-influenced, but, um, yeah, d- just the... I think, actually, anything, you know, uh, big money pop is pretty much stuff that I'm not really all that interested in. Yeah, I wouldn't mm-hmm. agree with that. For Andy, I will say Filk. <laughs> yes. <laughs> man, man, does he hate Filk. <laughs> What, what he hates even more is us being called Bilk. Yeah. Are you kidding? Oh, we would never do that, but I, I don't blame him for that. But was Andy's first exposure to Filk, the band, <laughs> through cons or something? Maybe. Yeah. Probably. I think, yeah. I think all of our, it, we, we, all, we, all, all of us, us that yeah. kind of rings true. We, we were at, at a convention. We were at a convention, and there were a couple of Filk bands there. And to be fair, they were not good Filk. I mean, like, <laughs> I mean, it, it was really bad. And, 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 uh, uh, some lady came along and asked us if we were going to play in the filk show. And Andy <laughs> <laughs> he, he was like, F no. <laughs> I mean, we don't, we don't want to, we don't want you to walk away with the wrong impression. It's, we don't, as a band, have anything against filk. I mean, it's, we just don't being like, labeled. Except, yeah, it's just, just, just not what we are. And, yeah. and the, the, well, it gets, some people get confused sometimes. I, I'm, I'm just saying his, his first impression of filk yeah, right, was right. that. Yeah. Right. And, and then someone asked us, you know, they 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 called us Silk, so he was extra like. Yeah, it's kind of a. It's kind of. I a, can imagine the sensitivity. <laughs> I can. I, I I can I can imagine the sensitivity to it. But yes, um, uh, yeah. Well, we we are there with you, Andy. I don't I don't <laughs> think any of us. I don't think any of us think of you as a Phil band by any stretch of the imagination. However, it's not to say that Silk isn't fun for those who do it. Yeah. There. Do we, I, I okay. personally don't have a problem with with Silk. I mean, if it's good. And creative, and I mean, if they perform it well, I'm, I'm, I have no problem with that style. Right, right. Uh, but yeah, a lot of it is not. Well, it's like, a, yeah, it's like any kind of music. It can be done really well, or it can be done yeah. really right. badly. Yeah. <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah, this, and the same thing applies with, with cosplay. It's the same thing, right? <laughs> yeah, yeah, cosplay, yeah, is, cosplay is done well, and sometimes it just sucks to high heaven. Uh, I've got a question. Um, are you all TOS fans, or um, what is your favorite Star Trek series? I don't like Star Trek. <laughs> <laughs> I think TOS is probably mine. I like the NG a lot, too, but I've always, I always have a soft spot for TOS. I, I grew up as a kid watching... You grew up as a kid? I grew up as a kid. <laughs> <laughs> no way! You yeah. still Did we all? <laughs> Your height. <laughs> uh, I, I would say you're still growing up. I'm, I'm trying. Poor Noah, he's short. I'm short, and I, I can't grow a beard. Um, <laughs> I'm so sorry. I'm loving the bullying video when Chris makes fun of Noah's height. <laughs> like, <laughs> You're you're not even like you're bullying him in the video. <laughs> I don't know. I, right, I go, have go no ahead. Uh, go ahead. Um, I grew up watching the original series. It kind of fulfilled my science fiction needs between the Star Wars movies as a kid. Yeah. Um, okay. And it was it was always seemed to be on around dinner time, and and I I really loved it. I didn't really get into Next Generation when it was it was like on dirt when I was in like in middle school and maybe I had school. other other things to do. I yeah, was, I was aware of it, but I never <laughs> got into it. Mike tried to get me back into it re- like a year ago. Uh, uh, I made it about. You made it to I night made it terror. to night terror. <laughs> <laughs> and then I then I smashed my DVD player. And hey, what, what's my DVD box in there? Set. Yeah, see, the whole You smashed my box set. I took a five pound sledgehammer and destroyed the whole thing. <laughs> and I, I wept I silent bitter tears. You know, night terrors. You can blame night terrors. We can go on the okay. record for five year mission all saying night terrors is the worst Star Trek episode. Worse what? than Spock's right? Worse than Omega Glory. What, what's your what's your favorite Star Trek, Chris? Uh, I, I I really like TOS, but I I just I love DS9. I think it's awesome. 
that was Mike and I. He loves DS9 too. That, that was a, a high that five. That was a high five. I heard that. Right on, yeah. I, I like TNG, um, and uh, you know, a lot of people swear by it, but I, I think the people that swear by it just haven't watched DS9 enough. Yeah, because it's all really <laughs> enough. Did you notice he said that? He had, yes, I did. He had, yeah, <laughs> like, best you know, story. modifier in there. I heard it. It was it was great, but yeah, I I, I really love TOS though, and not not only for its, I mean, it definitely has this kind of campy quality. Um, you know, it's it's got that that old look, but it's just if you really pay attention, it, it has really. I mean, they tackle a lot of issues that were not popular to tackle in the sixties. Right, things that couldn't have been tackled. Yeah, so in a typical framework. Yeah, they didn't because it was framed in a in a in a science fiction setting. Um, they were able to do it so that it wasn't. You know, they were kind of towing the line, but they weren't going over it. And I think that was really really inventive. Mm-hmm. And I think a lot of people don't really realize that just because you know they see the Horta or something. You know, it's you know the, the, it's, it's not just because they have some goofy alien and alien in there. They think that the the quality of the show isn't as good, but um, I disagree. Yeah, I, well, I I'm, I agree with you too. I think a lot of the problem is just the, the amount of time that has passed since those things were taboo, and and now they're no longer taboo. Right. The, the the generation of today looks back on it. What is for all intent and purposes, as they see it, a completely campy show, mm-hmm. and they don't they don't understand how terribly groundbreaking it really was at the time. And but that's a good thing because that just means that we've moved forward thanks to shows like Star Trek in the 60s. So, um, Mike, you got another question? I think I stepped on you. Um, let's see. A lot of our questions appear to be very similar, Terry. So uh, that okay. <laughs> that makes things a little bit more difficult. Um, let's see. Uh, you had a very successful Kickstarter uh, uh, to produce your your third album, Year Three. Uh, so, can you can you talk about uh, about that that process and and uh, anything you want to say to your fans that? That may be listening. We have your money. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Seriously, how? I mean, for the how stressful is it to go through a Kickstarter fund? Because I mean, that's right. a well, Kickstarter. It's for the, for those people who don't know, Kickstarter is the company where if you don't get your money, you don't get the money, kind of a thing. If you meet your goals, then you get the money. But how stressful was that for you guys? It came about. Um, it's just kind of a you know, hey, you know, what have we got to lose, kind of thing. And um, I. Was was, I was really kind of passionate about it. I kind of pushed it from the beginning. I was like, hey, guys, you know, this, this could be really good if it works. You know, we won't have to worry about paying for the album. And so, um, you know, we did a lot of work on, on the in the beginning, just getting everything ready, getting the video ready. Um, I, I don't know if it was particularly stressful, but there was just a lot to do to, um, you know, create uh, award levels and things like that. Once we got it up, it was kind of exciting to watch, you know, the money start rolling in because over a weekend, we had... It's amazing. We, yeah. It, it was really like 24 hours. Yeah, so it was. It we kind of had this, all of our expectations yeah, right away. Yeah, we even had this contingency plan right as we put it up. We're like, you know what? If we if we don't make enough, we'll just fund the rest of it ourselves, and then you know that it'll still be cheaper for us to do this. And it just kind of blew our minds, you know, just like. <laughs> We got all this money right away, and then the rest of it was just extra that we could use for whatever we we needed. And so, that was a huge deal for us. Yeah, right. We were, the mastering was a big, big deal, yeah. and I remember when you guys were pushing for it. And I think it's wonderful that now. Uh, forgive me if I'm wrong, but the mastering wasn't just on the third album, correct? Well, we did. Um, you did stretch goals that we, covered others. Well, we do. Uh, we do mastering on every album, but I I do the mastering, and it's a lot of <laughs> it's a lot of tedious work. Because I'll master something and then send it out to the guys. The same way that we do mixing, um, Mike and, and Noah do a lot of the mixing, and then they send us mixes and we kind of we listen to them and, and, and send notes back. Um, with the mastering, um, I just take all the mixes and I, and I do it all, you know, at my house and then send them out. And and this the great thing about the Kickstarter campaign is I didn't have to do that this time. <laughs> you know, the mastering I think, um, well, I mean I do it, so I guess I'm biased, but I think it's, it usually comes out pretty well. Uh, I think that. <laughs> <yeah>. <laughs> <laughs> what we got back was was a, a step up, but um, the the other we didn't remaster any other albums, but we did reprint Year One because we were completely out of it, That's which awesome. was another big big um, cool. yeah, plus for the Kickstarter campaign because yeah. we wouldn't have been able to afford to, to reprint Year One because we just you know, don't have that much money. <laughs> right, right. Well, I mean, it's definitely a project of love. There's no doubt about it, and I'm sure that you guys have to deal with um, all sorts of issues. Shall we say legal and non? 
on. Um, <clears throat> that must be a challenge unto itself, yes? Uh, well, um, one have of Have you the, gotten any grief from convention we haven't gotten organizers? Any, we haven't gotten any oh. grief from any convention organizers. People ask us all the time, you know, how do you, you know, how, what is it, CBS? Yeah. yeah. What, yeah, yeah. Right? Paramount? Paramount you know, yeah. How do they, you know, what do they think about this? And we're like, we don't know. You know, we've met. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. As far as we can tell, they don't have a problem with it because, I mean, they've they've featured us on Star Trek dot com homepage. Yeah, right. And I mean, so many people that have been involved with the show are either fans or they at least know of us. Yeah. And and we've never heard anything. And and I mean, the way I see it is, I mean, we're just writing tributes. Tributes, right? We're right. Uh, it's our own original material. Exactly. Right? It's a, it's your own original work. There's no doubt about it. But I I I think. It's, uh, I'm just very excited for you guys. Now, what cons do you have coming up? Any? I know you've got a couple of concerts coming up. In yeah. April, is it? Yeah, we have. Uh, we're playing down in Bloomington, Indiana. Um, there's a, a, a technology convention called uh, the, 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 the Combine. Yeah, sorry. And we're, there's kind of an after party for that that we're playing. And then we're playing it in Chicago at the Adler Planetarium. They have a... Um, it's called, wait, wait, wait. Did I hear that right? You're playing at the Adler Planetarium? Yes. Yeah. How yeah. fun is that? That. And they have an event that they do monthly, I think. What it's called Adler, Adler, Adler After Dark. Give them the date. Uh, yeah. yeah, I think it's the 12th. Bluebird yeah, Blue in Bloomington Bird. on the 12th of April. Yeah, I think 17th. the 17th, 17th of April is uh, is Adler Planetarium. They have it, it's called Adler After Dark. You can get tickets online, and actually, um, starting tomorrow, you can get tickets online. We'll, we're going to add that to our website, and then um, other conventions. And, and we'll make sure that we put the link on our show notes as well. Definitely. Okay. We'll, we'll uh, definitely be at what Gen oh, Con. Oh yeah, we'll, we'll be at Gen and Con. Wizard World. World, the, next, the next convention we're doing is Indie PopCon, which we haven't officially... This is the official announcement right here. Uh, <laughs> it's, it's, it's the um, the first year for this convention. It, it's um, here in Indianapolis, and um, we'll be playing. We don't know when yet, but we're also, we'll are also be uh, treated as, as featured musicians, and um, I think the, ol- the only other announced featured musician right now is uh, Paul and Storm. Paul and Storm. Yeah. Yeah. So we'll be you know up with, with the likes of them, which is kind of cool. Yeah, really excited about this. So, uh, How yeah, fun. And also also, um, there's a, uh, a bar up in Chicago that's going to be opening eventually. It's called uh, uh, Geek Bar Geek Chicago. Bar. And basically, the idea behind it was the guy that, that created this, he wanted to create a bar where he could go and watch Doctor Who with his friend. And it kind of evolved. Oh, cool. Yeah, it kind of evolved. And, and uh, the place is going to be a place for people to go to watch, you know, geeky shows and play games and that kind of thing. And um, we're hoping, we know that we're going to be playing there probably um, kind of, some. some an opening party or something like that so we don't really have the full details yet so we don't want to say too much but um we're, how we're, awesome yeah that is very cool that is that, now that's amazing i want can i live there does does he sell rooms is that <laughs> <laughs> you get the <laughs> i'm kidding oh my god that sounds awesome Remember, remember, Mike, I told you about my idea for, like, the world's best bar? Okay, that sounds like this guy just took everything I wanted to do. <laughs> Franchise opportunity. Maybe. Yeah, there you go. Because <laughs> New Mexico needs a life, I'm just saying. Um, <laughs> so, you guys, uh, do you have the ability to play a little bit of something, maybe? Yeah, sure. Yeah. No? Uh, okay. Yeah. We, we can, can do that. Do that. <laughs> uh, let's see. What do we want to do first? Yeah, what, do do? <laughs> what are you going to do? <laughs> <clears throat> Something from your three, maybe. Yeah, we're gonna promote, we're gonna promote the new album. Yeah, sounds great. Perfect. Um, yeah, we might as well go the first. Song. Okay. Yeah, we'll do the we uh we practiced a few tunes before for uh beforehand here. So all of these we practiced acoustically tonight, and that's it. We don't. This, this is the first time anyone's heard these. <laughs> Possibly us as well. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh. Okay. All right. This is uh, this is the first song off of Year Three. This is about a a robot. <laughs> That's right. Oh, 
Thank you so much. I was like, I know this. I know this episode. I know this episode. (laughs) That's great. Oh, my God. You guys sound wonderful. And unplugged even better. I'm just saying. Yeah, that was fantastic. (laughs) If you do decide to do an an unplugged album, yeah. (laughs) Let us know. We're there. (laughs) Yeah, all over it. (laughs) I might do that someday. (laughs) So a couple of questions to kind of tie things up as we we wrap things up for the interview. Um, I think I remember a few of these things on, um, we kind of have a list of kind of James Lipton questions, and we've already hit you with a couple of them. Um, So we're just going to kind of go through the basic list. We've already talked about your favorite Star Trek shows. Do you guys have a favorite, who are your favorite captains? I mean, assuming, you don't have to have the favorite show be the same captain, I'm just saying. I think everybody aspires to be like Picard. (laughs) He's certainly probably the most, the one you can maybe respect as sort of the ideal sort of captain. But Kirk is so much more fun. <laughs> <laughs> that is true. This is true. Oh, Kirk. Uh, <laughs> and uh, and th- now sometimes the questions that we ask, or we typically ask um, the authors that we have that we, uh, as guests. And I'm going to tweak those questions a little bit. And the questions to you are um, individually uh, to the to the four of you. Uh, what musicians' work do you run to your favorite music source to buy the day that it's released? There's not very many uh, groups or artists anymore that I really do that for. Um, I, I mean, you know, I, I would say I, I probably still get uh, each No Effects album when it comes out. Um, but really, aside from that, I mean, there's not a whole lot that I hurry out and get these days. We actually hate music. <laughs> <laughs> 
Is there anything currently coming out that, that you go for now? I can say for me, um, Rick Springfield, <laughs> if he would just keep making music. No. Uh, <laughs> um, yeah, it, Super Chunk. It, it, Super Chunk took a long, long uh, <laughs> hiatus, but but they put out a couple albums in the past couple years, so I think they're they're going to stay current. I would run out and you know ears closed by anything that they and they've been really they really good out, albums and they've too. been really good albums. Yeah, um, I just bought yesterday the most recent uh, Hold Steady album that just came out and I would buy anything by Ted Leo from the pharmacist um, if, if he decides to make any more music in a couple of years. So those would be my top three. Anyone else? Um, Wilco is probably one we can agree on, maybe. Yeah, Patch and I can, can both agree on that one. They might be Giants, maybe. Although their, their more current stuff is a little spottier, but I still really enjoy them. Yeah, I think I think when I was younger, I, I remember standing in line, you know, for like the Smashing Pumpkins and, right. and things like that, which I think, you know, back in like 95 when Melancholy and Infinite Sadness came out, you couldn't get it online. You had to go, you know, to the, to the record store and, and get it on CD or, or whatever you, medium you, you listened to at the time. Right. Um, now, I think... Yeah. Music is just kind of everywhere. I, yeah, I listen, I yeah. listen to a lot of internet radio, so I, I get a lot of that. Um, you know, it's kind of a, a thing where I'll listen to a lot of it and if something catches my ear. Like, for example, the, the latest um, uh, music that I, I purchased was Jason Isbell, his, his latest album and it's it's incredible and I, I, I knew I know the artist and I've listened to him before but it was one of those things where I may not necessarily have, have, have picked it up had I not came, come across it and, and, and seen that it was it, uh, in this particular instance it was on Spotify and um, I just saw that it was on there and I said oh yeah I'll, I'll check this out I haven't listened to this guy in a while and it was so awesome that, that I wanted it so it's for me it's it's not so much I have this these artists that I want to go out and get it's I kind of look for these new discoveries that I may not have, have remembered very cool. Is there a, now again, one more, oh, did I hear somebody? I don't want to step on anybody. Okay. Um, the next question is, again, it's a, kind of a tweaked question that we have. Um, instead of <clears throat> asking about a writer, if they got to write uh, a series of books about any particular character, I'm going to ask you guys, if you got an opportunity to write an original song about any particular character from any of the shows, not just TOS, um, or even a, a, a focused, a story, a story in a song that you would like to be heard about a particular Star Trek character, who would it be? Barkley. Oh, yes. That would be a great sort of song story within a song story, sort of. <laughs> sort of it would be very meta. It is true. Exactly. I think maybe a uh, Wei Yun Brunt Shran <gasps> trilogy. Oh, something to Combs. Yes. Yeah. Note to Combs. Actually, if you could do it, Jeffrey Combs would probably sing it. <laughs> yeah. That would be fun. Oh, I never know it. It's Andrea from what the <laughs> made up. <laughs> no, yeah, that's how it, yeah. No, I would write much more in depth. He would write more songs. Yeah, right. More songs about yeah. Sherry Jackson. More songs <laughs> More songs about Sherry Jackson. <laughs> Anybody else? I don't know. I think a, a Quark song would be pretty, pretty entertaining. Yeah. Maybe yeah. more talk. Actually, a Quark Odo song together. Yeah. Oh. Oh, yeah. I would kind of like to do some TNG just so we can write about Q. Oh, wait. Wesley. Wesley Crusher. <laughs> <laughs> I, I read a album about Wesley Crusher. Yeah, I think maybe a rock opera called Cyclops about General Martok. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my God. That would be awesome. That would be awesome. Yeah. It really would be. That would be great. And actually, I think it would really, really work well. <laughs> <laughs> I do. Uh, how annoying she is. You're so annoying. And your mom, too. <laughs> <laughs> I really know to write the night terrors. Um, yeah. <laughs> after, after, after Spock's brain EP, we're under the night terrors. It would be really <laughs> boring and stupid. <laughs> I would just float my well, guitar. Well, that's great. Around and Again. <laughs> two, two drums and drum two, two drums in distance. <laughs> Make it happen, <laughs> please. Well, again, now, it, now, album three, year three is already out. Right. Yeah. Our plans for year four, or I mean, yeah, there, there's two more. Yeah, we're, we're working on the, the Spox Brandy P will be the next release, but we are all, I think, currently working on songs for year four. Yeah, we, well. we drew the episodes for year four, and I think Patrick has all but one done. They're all, all, all. Of them I'm, I'm, right? I'm tinkering with them, but I have ideas for three of my four. Can first. we assume that you guys are gonna kickstart again? We don't. We don't. We haven't really discussed it. Um, I think we might. I, I think that it would probably be in our best interest. Be in our best interest. <laughs> <laughs> so. 
Well, we will certainly support you when you do. Just at, like we did uh, with uh, with the le- with the year three, uh, we were telling all of our listeners to to come out and and, and show your their support. So we really yeah, appreciate. We definitely, it. Yeah, and for all of our listeners, if you guys, uh, if you can't you know, if you can't remember a simple website like fiveyearmission dot net, then you can always head over to G and T Show, and there's actually a link over on the right hand side underneath their logo, um, and you can take you directly to the Five Year Mission site, and there. Like they said at the very top, they have all of their social media contact links, links to how you can buy their music on Amazon and watch their uh, videos on YouTube and whatnot. Whatnot is a word. I don't care what Black Magnum says. And, <laughs> <laughs> and that's actually, uh, well, there's also the Five Year Mission store. On yeah, the website. people may not know this, but um, on our web, our website on the homepage, you, you'll see all four of the albums. If you click on any of those albums, you can actually listen to the entire album. So all of our music is on our website, and and you have the ability to listen to it. That's fantastic. Very cool. That's very cool. And the Five Year Mission Store is where you can get stuff, you guys, like buttons and CDs and stickers and shirts. You have a play set. The play sets. We've got posters, buttons. How did you guys break to get a play set? Look at that. Aww. That's awesome. How cute. You can have Moxie in there. Yeah, we do. I love that. And the Gorn. (laughs) The play set Series 3 is done and it will be available soon. This is the bonus. Very fun. I'm I'm actually gonna get these. I want them on my shelf, right yeah, the, next to my Riker shrine. The book <laughs> for uh, series three is um, Nomad, and then series four I've already got planned out. I just have to. It takes forever to do them. <laughs> so is this something that you have to do all on your own? You've designed all of these. These are fun. Yeah, yeah I just I, I basically cartoonize the um, pictures of us in, in Photoshop and then um, make them, and, and and then I take those cartoons and I animate them. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> my thing is the animation with the cartoons I make. I mean, uh, a la uh, Mon- Monty Python, this, this is good. Yeah, 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 pretty much. Yeah, that's kind of the inspiration. Perfect. Yeah, it's good funny you watch the first animations and then you go to the, the latest animation because you can see quite an evolution. The first ones were very South Park. <laughs> <laughs> well, you don't have to worry. We do have an adult rating on this sh- on the show, so uh, if you let something slip and, and we don't we don't censor, so just just know that. Um, but thank. <laughs> <laughs> um, <laughs> um, well, we want to thank Five Year Mission for joining us and talking a little bit about their craft, how they uh, get together. Again, you can find all of their stuff, including their upcoming appearances, at their website, which is fiveyearmission.net. And uh, again, all of the links that we talked about on this week's uh, supplemental log, you'll be able to find on the show notes after we post our recording at our website. Website and all of the myriad places that you have now, Mike. Where are where can you find us now for our our shows? Uh, let's see. We're gntshow.com. We're on YouTube and uh, Mix Mixcloud as well. So yeah, we're expanding. <laughs> there you go. Well, again, thanks to everybody over at Five Year Mission, except Andy because you know he just couldn't show. We weren't good enough for him. Whatever. <laughs> and but, <laughs> so Noah, Patrick, Mike, and Chris, thanks you guys so much, and thank you, Andy. We 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 thank you so much for allowing us to use your music to um, make our show a bit brighter, and we hope we get to meet you in person someday soon. Keep up the great work, guys. Thank, thank you. you so much. We love your music, so thank you. Thanks. Thank you. All right, you guys, that'll do it for this week's Supplemental Log. Join us next week on Sunday for episode 137. Uh, Mr. Nick, I believe, will be missing, so Mike and I have recruited Black Magnum to join us as a guest co-host. We will catch you next week. Bye-bye. Kapla! GNT Show is a busy little beaver production. Music for the GNT show is provided by Warp 11, Grethor, Five Year Mission, and Andrew Allen's Smooth Federation.